nine eight. <laughs> are we recording? Yeah. Well, now we are. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. Well, no, because I really enjoyed it because it's really experimental and crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like insane. <laughs> that's like half the charm is just like I have no idea what's going on here. Like, yeah. Um. With. I don't know. Uh, same with Knower, too. Mm. Uh, Knower blew my mind because this is, is this jazz? Is this electronic? electronic. It, it's not EDM, but it is EDM. And yeah. I also went down a rabbit hole of um, Sam Gendel yes. playing saxophone yeah. with them. I discovered him through Knower, too. Yeah. Uh, and. He, I guess, tours with Moses Sumney sometimes. Oh, you you showed me him last time you were here. Yeah, and Moses Sumney's awesome and insane. Um, But he would play saxophone and loop stuff Hmm. on saxophone with it, with Moses Sumney, and a lot of times also just play guitar. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I, I, I went down a weird circle of, Oh, Sam Gendel. Mm-hmm. That's plays with Noah, but also plays with Moses Sumney, and it's it's all, yeah, the uh, snake eating itself. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of like how I discovered Lewis Cole, who is in Noah. Oh, okay. He's the, the drummer and writes okay. most of their things. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I knew him as just this crazy drummer, mm-hmm. and then I go and find his music. He's got an insane voice and just shreds his keyboard. Mm-hmm. Like the dude is amazing. Yeah. And um, have I shown you Sunlux? Have we talked yes. about Sunlux? Yeah, yeah. Um, their drummer, uh, Ian Chang, hmm. is insane, and he does shows just like by himself as oh. Ian Chang, and he just like solo drum shows. Yeah, and he has triggers and <clears throat> light shows with the so he can <clears throat> hit. A certain drum, so it's a full a on light. show. Yeah, it's a full show. That's cool. Um, but the fact that, oh yeah, we play for this band, but also like this whole giant musician. Something I I did think about in our last podcast was we're in a weird age where people can become genuinely famous through Instagram. Yes. Um, <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's strange because we're not used to it, but it's also just, how do we deal with this? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I don't even remember who this was. It was one of, one of my musician friends I was talking to and he was telling me, he was like, yes, Jimi Hendrix was great. And like, okay, we, we already know where this conversation is going. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> but he was saying that, What if just back in the 60s, we just didn't have all the means to see all the rest of the Jimi Hendrixes? Now with Instagram, you just type in guitar and scroll down. Yeah. And and just everyone's great. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And everyone's doing their own different thing. That's awesome. (laughs) Like I've been putting off making an Instagram for so long. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to have to eventually. (laughs) But yeah, it's. Yeah, it's everyone has it. Everyone sees everything on it. Mm-hmm. Like back to what we were talking about earlier, that one of my favorite guitarists, Mateo yeah. Sassato, that's how he got famous. Yeah. Like he was <laughs> in Brazil, like just playing guitar on Instagram, mm-hmm. just, and then he got picked up by Tori Kelly and is playing stadiums now. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> insane. And well, cause now record labels too, uh, they mm-hmm. don't really want, mm-hmm. oh, this is someone that we can get on our record label that shows promise because they're a good musician. They're actually more Mm -hmm. so looking for someone who already has a social media following Mm -hmm. so that they can make it happen more. Yeah. Like they're not trying to make less money. Yeah. (laughs) And so instead of, instead of being like, Oh, let's find a young Elvis. They're like, let's find someone who is already (laughs) famous. Trending. (laughs) Yeah. And just keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the weird seediness that happens too that like, I mean, anyone can talk crap about Taylor Swift. 
Uh, but Taylor Swift is this product of the massive record mm-hmm. labels and it's same with Ariana Grande. Like these, these people that are products have these massive hits and mm-hmm. supposedly cultural touchstones, but it's, it's really just, you know, millions of dollars being thrown into yeah the ether to make it famous more it's like (laughs) yeah it's just kind of like who's in front of your face at this moment Mm -hmm. like who's getting marketed who is Mm -hmm. seeing everyone but doesn't take anything away from them like ariana grande is like next level good yeah yeah she's a better mariah carey (laughs) (laughs) sorry mariah carey but she is i mean i'm 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 okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> um I can do without the Christmas song. Well, that but also just the the divaness. Yeah. So I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. I'd rather have a a slightly more down to earth. Not that like mm-hmm. I mean how down to earth can Ariana Grande be, but I don't know. I'll ask her next time we hang out. <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> She could be super cool. I mean, yeah. I mean, you always hope that all these super famous people are cool. Yeah. And then the other weird thing with fame is these mumble rappers and all Mm -hmm. that stuff that were sort of rewarding insanity. Yeah. Literally insanity. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's like, I have a group of friends that they... They're always on top of who's the new rapper coming out, who's big. Mm-hmm. And they'll like show me things and I'm like, and I just kind of go with it because I don't want to be like, this sounds exactly like the person you showed me before. Like, how do you find these people? Yeah. Like, although, because I can't just say bad things about it. The one thing I do like from the mumble rap genre, mm. the tracks, the tracks are always good. Yeah. Yeah. The production is, is and you can crank that in your car mm-hmm. and it's awesome. <laughs> and, and another way I kind of have to put my head to think about it is like whenever you listen to like death metal or something like that mm-hmm. with like the harsh vocals. Yeah. Like it's not a lot. Your voice isn't a melodic instrument then it's rhythmic. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's kind of how I see mumble rap is it's kind of just like a texture. Like I don't really try yeah, and yeah. understand it too much. That's actually a, a, a concept that I've been thinking about uh, for composition is that uh, I do want to write a, a text sound piece um that uses just words or the sound of mouth to create a texture yeah um and so people don't think about it in this way but rap is a it's a rhythmic instrument mm-hmm. but it's it's also the text the texture of the voice and the consonants and everything you don't have to necessarily know what someone's saying, but if they say it very quickly, it's impressive anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, have you ever heard like Midwest choppers or anything like that by tech nine? Like, oh yeah. Tech yeah, yeah. nine Busta rhymes, like all these other mm. people. And it's just who can go the fastest on their verse. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter like, what they're saying. That, that's rap shred. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's rap sweet picking. And, it doesn't matter what they're saying. In fact, if you're doing fast, wordy rapping, there's not a whole lot of rhyming. Mm-hmm. It's just you cram a whole bunch of words and then you just make sure that the last word has the same sound. Yeah. yeah. But since you're writing a paragraph, you can make the last word have the same sound. <laughs> That's what you can do for your next album. Just have this really profound, long thing and just wrap it as fast as you can in 20 <laughs> seconds. I do have, there is more than one song on SoundCloud in which I am rapping. I am technically a SoundCloud rapper. Hey, (laughs) I haven't heard that. I'm going to have to go find that. (laughs) There's, there's one on my profile, but then there's also one on, uh, do you remember, uh, Tim from, oh yeah. 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 Uh, he moved to Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. 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 He works at Sweetwater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was in a uh, Zoot Suit. Yeah. Yeah. Zoot Suit was great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rip Zoot Suit. Yes. <laughs> um, but 
yeah, uh, we did a songwriting project. Uh, I think I was in that see. class. Yeah. And I rapped a verse on that, and that's on SoundCloud. So there's more than one song with me rapping on SoundCloud. I am a SoundCloud rapper. There you go. <laughs> Where's my money, We're, I guess? Well, get the tattoos first. Or, oh, yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> what is with face tattoos? I mean, what's the deal with face tattoos? But like... Paul Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm just a curmudgeon. Uh, I mean, I'm the same way. Like, I don't <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> but... Maybe I'm not supposed to. I don't know. Yeah. Are we are we too old for the generation already? Man, I think I'm young and hip. But <laughs> whenever you teach people younger than you and they all know all the same memes, jokes, and videos that you've never even heard of. Yeah. Makes you feel old real quick. Yeah, that's true. What, what's the last thing that a student said that you were like, whoa, I'm old? Oh, man, I don't even know. <laughs> Well, most of the jokes I've realized, like, that's what a lot of humor is. It's not even the joke itself. It's you just say something and then there's like an implied humor. Yeah. And that's that's what memes have become. Yeah. We're in a a dark world right now and that's, that's where we are. (laughs) Yeah. Like this, the T pose joke thing. Like, yeah. Okay. So you know what that is? Yeah. I didn't, I had no idea what the (laughs) hell was going on because we were at like one of the performance shows that we do like we were mm-hmm. at 89th street collective mm-hmm. we were backstage someone yelled something and it was like i don't even know a how to cult. describe it. yeah <laughs> just like everyone within earshot just stops and does this and i'm just like what is going on <laughs> yeah that's it's just that's the world we're in yeah um because i'm i'm about to go on like a weird dissertation rant here but like oh uh, your your <laughs> meme thesis yes <laughs> have we talked about this yeah you told me about it last time you were here yeah yeah um but i mean we're beyond just the, here's a joke and there's a reference with an image yeah like here's an image macro here's a a, a raptor that looks like it's thinking and then it's saying something kind of philosophical and funny yeah get it yeah and then you know, some of them were a little bit odd in that it's just a penguin looking left and then it's it says it did something awkward. So it's like you kind of have to know that that's the format. Yeah. But I mean, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But now now it's just a T-pose or yeah. like a Fortnite dance. See, I I remember this makes me sound old. I remember when I first started becoming aware of like Back internet Monday. stuff and memes. It was like the troll face and like the yeah, yeah. like a sir guy holding a wine glass. Yeah, like that's what memes were. Mm-hmm. Now, half the time I go through Facebook, things you share, like a bunch of other people are just like, I think I get it, but I don't really get it. I would apologize, <laughs> but I'm not sorry. No, you're not supposed to be. <laughs> like. Is it that the whole picture in itself existing is the punchline? It's so many layers See, that you have to have gotten where it came from in the first place. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't even really need to know if you've seen enough of them. Yeah. It's like they just they just start spreading like wildfire. Yeah. Like you take this one thing, they add this meme to this one. Mm-hmm. Like. Somehow I feel old every time I have to type in like, what does this, like whatever meme it is mean? Yeah. Like, what is this? <laughs> um, and there's like a website dedicated to explaining. Yes. Oh, I can't remember what it's know called. Know your meme. Yes. That's what it was. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, there's something wrong with my brain, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're like, oh no, I'm the top contributor. <laughs> I don't contribute to it. Uh, I don't make any memes. I'm no, just, no? I'm just like a, a researcher, I guess. Oh. Like I just. I like looking into it and knowing about it. Have have you thought about making them? Yeah, I just don't have Photoshop. Oh. Is there I I could do like MS Paint, but (laughs) just make make them like purposely bad. Yeah. Which was is a genre of memes. Yes. Uh like deep frying a meme. Yeah, I didn't get that one for I gotta have someone explain to me what the whole E thing was. And I still don't really get it. But I'm kind of like, okay. 
I acknowledge that, that it's a that joke. That is one of the the deepest ones, which is not that deep at all. It's <laughs> it's kind of just really meta. Like, in you're that, supposed to laugh at this kind of. Yeah, humor has devolved to the point that Markiplier's face photoshopped onto Lord Farquaad's head, photoshopped onto Mark Zuckerberg's body at the hearing where he was interviewed about Facebook and the letter E below it is funny now. <laughs> oh man. And and that's just there's not really an explanation for it. Explaining it is what's funny. Yeah. I mean the explanation that you just gave for that was much funnier yeah, than exactly. the actual picture. But like when you look at it and go, what the yeah. What? <laughs> I'm just like, I don't, at this point, I don't even like linger that long on it. I'm just kind of like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll just like keep scrolling. And so as, as it keeps going, then once you understand, okay, this is what humor has gotten to. So E, but that creates a new foundation. You yeah. just started a new language. Yeah. Then you can start anything off of E. Yeah. And so now that you can just put an E by itself on something and it's referencing the thing. Yeah. And people out there will laugh at that. Yes. So you can just put an E somewhere and people will be like, huh. yeah, like we're talking about that right now. Yeah. So it's oh. not even like, it's not a, it's not a velociraptor saying a what if thing. It's just E is funny now. Yeah. I really wonder who was the first person that made that meme. Who decided that E was going to be a joke now? It it doesn't matter. That's a weird thing too. Like See, there's no original source. You well, can try and source I mean, it, but you can't prove it either. Like you can be like, "Oh yeah, I started the E meme." Mm. Well, first of all, like no one's going to care. No one's going to care. It's kind of cool, but also you can't prove it. Right. Well, you could also you can be the the weirdo in the corner being like, "That that was me. I did that." Like you're yeah, no one cares, dude. Like <laughs> <laughs> Man, that that would be the one BuzzFeed article I would be like, oh, I got to read that. Like, here's all the people that started each meme, but not like the troll face or things like that. Right. The really deep ones. Yeah. I mean, there's BuzzFeed articles of like, where are the meme people now? And so it's like overly attached girlfriend and like the guy. Bad luck, Brian. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, and some of them haven't done anything with their lives it's just like they got famous for a while yeah. and now they have to deal with being recognized at work sometimes yeah <laughs> imagine being one of the the original like meme people and you you can't scroll through facebook yeah like you're just like oh yep there i am yeah oh, that's terrible like <laughs> right unless like, those memes are dead yeah <laughs> it's like i can't believe someone said that <laughs> <laughs> so i mean it's it's a weird cesspool uh, i'm i'm not mad at myself but i kind of am for laughing at one there's a page that's called memes that are so deep and dank that they just return to normal yeah i've seen that page from you sharing it <laughs> and it like there was one there's a meme of an old 60s episode of spider-man where there was a Spider-Man clone or something and he was yeah. pointing at himself. Yeah. And then that became a meme of just, you know, things that are the same thing pointing at each other. Yeah. Like when you finally run into the guy that's been messing up your life. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you. Yeah. Ha ha. But this one was just Spider-Man and there was two movers holding a mirror in front of him. <laughs> and he was just pointing. It's like, yeah, he's pointing at himself because that's the meme but he's pointing at himself because it's a mirror like it's funny. that's what's funny it's funny because you expect it to be odd and it's not yeah no it, it's a mirror that's yeah. what's funny <laughs> and it, it like i laughed at it and i yeah there's something wrong with my brain <laughs> there are some things like that that you just see it and it just catches you in just the right way right and i mean going back to like adam neely stuff the mm. the lick has devolved <laughs> beyond what it originally was yeah 
and you know it's it's been a inside joke among jazz musicians to be like hey here's that thing yeah remember and it's like hey we know each other well enough to know that that's that to thing quote this same set of notes at each other yes and so you're in yeah if you quote the lick in that because i'm trying to think like it wasn't like super popular for him was it because i remember like the videos they had like compilations on youtube yeah, yeah. of like all kinds of black and white footage like esperanza spalding like mm. all these people quoting it or just playing it yeah but yeah he kind of took it to a new level yeah and what what was the original sort of meme idea? Like memes are just ideas that are passed along. And if you understand the thing, then we're on the same page. That's kind of what a meme is. Yeah, it's and you can say that language itself is a meme. Um, and so. If you go, hey, this is a phone, we both understand that the word phone stands for this. Mm -hmm. And that's, we, we get, get it. it. We're on the same page. Yeah. That's the <clears throat> mimetic process. And, it, and enough people know what that word means. And so that's how it spreads. <laughs> and, but then new language is formed and yeet is a thing now. See, I've seen it a lot in context, but I don't know what it exactly means. Isn't it like when you throw something or hit something? That's that's the I guess closest definition. Like you can yeet something, which is throwing it across the room. Okay. But you can also yeet yourself. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> and so like you could you know, jump off a building and that's, you know, yeeting yourself. Mm. But then, I don't know, you can, <laughs> if you're, if you're trying to turn left and, you know, there's still a lot of traffic you just drive and there's traffic. like just enough of a gap, you can yell yeet as you, you know, floor it and try and make it through your left turn. <laughs> that's a valid use of yeet. And it's a word now. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, and I really appreciate how even grammar is yeah, surrounding it because I think the correct, the correct past tense of yeet is yote. See, I saw a, a discussion about that. It was like a Reddit thing where they're talking about <laughs> yote, but that was before I'd ever even heard of yeet. And yeah. I was like, this is this crazy is talk. Me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, I realized not too long ago that I thought I liked memes. Like, I thought I was a fan, <laughs> but I'm pretty much a normie at this point. Yeah. Like, not too long ago, a friend was showing me, have you ever seen Dr. Steve Brule on Adult Swim? It's John C. Riley. Oh, uh, maybe. And he plays just, John C. Riley's like a real actor. Like, he's mm -hmm. yeah, good. He's but, in Wreck-It Ralph 2. Yeah, like, but he just plays the dumbest possible person you can imagine. And mm. it's just, it's kind of like the acknowledging itself kind of meme. Like it's just yeah, yeah. so dumb and so bad. That's why it's supposed to be funny. Yeah. That's what the, cause it was on Tim and Eric, right? Yeah. I think that might be where it started. And then yeah. it got like its own. Yeah. Time Tim slot. and Eric as a show is just the most nonsense possible. Mm. I've never watched it myself, Yeah, but it's, it's straight garbage. And that's the point. Yeah, that's what this, and he was showing me like it was a special and mm -hmm. I'm just watching it and I'm like, I think I get it. But like, that's when I realized I told him, I was like, I think I'm a normie because I'd rather be watching like American Dad or Family Guy or something like that. Like if I'm going to go that route. Yeah. No, that, that's pretty normie. Yeah. <laughs> I accept it. <laughs> <laughs> and like normie is another word yeah. that has just formed around this thing. <laughs> For people that aren't fully in the in group. Yeah. But these things form through culture no matter mm. what. Like, I mean, comedians refer to people who aren't comedians as like commoners. Mm. Because 
comedians also have something wrong with their brain. And yeah. They think sentences differently and constantly try to structure them in a way that is funny. Yeah. And so when you have that wrong with your brain, you they tend to just like separate themselves from other people. And it's like, we communicate in this way. We get it. Yeah. And so it, it becomes its own sort of mimetic culture. Yeah. Like itself, like what you were saying about like a language, like Mm -hmm. it's all jargon at some points where it turns like all the memes turn into your own language. Right. Yeah. And music. Yeah. Has its own in group. And so again, with the lick. Yeah. If you know the lick, you know enough jazz to know the lick. Yeah. Or at least enough about jazz. Yeah. You're aware of the lick. Like some of the culture. Yeah. Or like, and I, yeah, I'm sure that can go even further to like every single instrument. Yeah, like exactly. I'm sh- like, I'm sure like oboe players have oboe related jokes that I would never understand or trombone players. Oh yeah. Like, Whenever you're making your own read and you cut your hand because oboes make their own reads. Are oboes double, double read? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, like I'm sure they all, like every instrument has their own jokes. Yeah, and it's just, it's it's weird because there's this thread that runs through humanity that seems to be consistent with these things. And so I was talking to a friend yesterday that um, low brass players tend to be silly goofball types of people. Okay. I don't know. What it is. It's just like something about low brass. Something about that low personality. brass. We're silly goofball people. I, <laughs> I guess I'm technically still low brass in, in my veins or something because I played trombone. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't know that. But yeah, like, and it's consistent. Like trumpet players are kind of like guitarists and that they're the high and mighty, like egotistical. Yeah. Look at but, me. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I mean. It comes from the fact that they're the instrument of God. <laughs> what do angels play? Harps. Yes. They play lyres and trumpets. <laughs> Who are the most egotistical instrumentalists? <laughs> trumpets and guitarists. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. Never heard that. <laughs> um, I mean, what gets played whenever the king walks in? The trumpets. Yep. <laughs> um, so I don't know what it is. And like flute players tend to be uh, either really feminine girls that like girly things and butterflies or whatever, or gay dudes. Um, and I'm just saying like what the, the stereotype yeah. is. And of course, not every person in these groups is going to be that. Is going to be that. No, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just thinking back because I only did band for three years when mm. I was in school. So I'm trying to think back, like who was in each section. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just checking it as I'm going. <laughs> and so, like these trends happen, and since it happens enough, a language forms around it. And so, oh, those trumpets, you know, playing really loudly and trying to hit the high note. <laughs> Because that's what trumpets do. Yeah. And it happens often enough that we notice it. So that's what trumpets do. (laughs) So could you compare the instrument to, or the instrument, the internet to an instrument then? And if that's those kind of end jokes, they got started because all these people on the internet. Yeah. Like an internet culture, like a trumpet culture hitting Mm -hmm. that high C or whatever the highest note on trumpet is. Yeah. And that's, and that's what happens like for whatever reason humans have a tendency to continue Mm -hmm. making subgroups of subgroups Mm -hmm. to feel comfortable in themselves with people that understand each other. And so like, if you go into one of the darkest recesses of the internet, that is 4chan. um, See, I don't know a ton about that. I used to think that 4chan and Reddit were the same thing. And I'd always heard terrible <laughs> things about it. So I was like, ah, I don't really want to mess with it. But then, right. I, then I discovered Reddit like six months ago. I was like, yeah. oh, this is like the greatest website Oh, yeah, ever. Reddit is great. Yeah. Like, 
anything I ever have a question about, I can just type that question and put Reddit, Reddit at the, at the end, the of, end it. of it. Yeah. And then some nice person on the internet who mm. happens to be an expert on the thing yeah. that it's happens like, to browse r slash that specific thing that I'm looking for. Yeah, it's like 16 comments down <laughs> and you have to just scroll through and like, oh, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a big fan now. Yeah. But as far as like, internet cesspools that aren't the deep web <laughs> there's like 4chan and then reddit and then tumblr and then twitter and then facebook <laughs> okay um so like oh, facebook yeah. is as normy as you can get because it's like you know it's people's every, yeah people's grandma yeah uh and there's there's a whole joke in like minion memes yes yeah uh, it's minions saying either very conservative christian things or or terrible messed up things with a minion on it yeah or just like a bumper sticker like yeah i'd rather be fishing <laughs> it's yeah and it's like how much more normy can you turn it up mm -hmm. and it's like haha get it they're normy yeah <laughs> <laughs> like man um yeah i still haven't discovered the whole reddit subculture yet like i, I mean there's just subreddits and that's how the website is yeah no i'm meaning like all the in jokes and stuff oh yeah, i see yeah. like a lot of things referencing other things and i'm still not there yet i need to do my his history homework right well it's like they're it's just subgroups yeah and so uh, I mean, r slash incel is a thing, and if you know about incels, yeah, then it's like, wow, that sounds like a terrible place on the internet. Yeah, I don't think and I'm gonna type is, that one up. Yeah, um, is that what a lot of 4chan is? 4chan has less groups because there's the website itself determines what subreddits there are, or not subreddits, what like pages there are. Okay. Uh, whereas on Reddit, anyone can make a subreddit and other people can subscribe to it. Oh, so the website like moderates like who can start this page or whatever, if this yeah. page exists. Yeah. So 4chan just has a list of threads that are the groups. Okay. And so there's like a video game thread and people talk about video games. And there's also like, uh, a whole lot of porn uh <laughs> isn't that most of the internet though um yeah but like it's a lot of porn uh, <laughs> <laughs> and different types of porn if you're looking for it uh <laughs> but um and then there's just well there's also like uh slash pol which is like politics oh okay i was thinking it was like an abbreviation or something like, well yeah yeah or What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, P dot O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I anagram. Is that the abbreviation? Right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I thought there was a word for it. I couldn't think of it. Yep. We are both blinking. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, P.O.L. has just turned into like the alt right. Oh. Just being an echo chamber on 4chan. Because the thing about 4chan is that it's anonymous. Oh, so, that's why it's so terrible. Yeah. Because anyone can say anything okay. and it doesn't trace back to them. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. And what happens with that, um, I'm always going to try and find an analogy back to music, but like what happens with that is that these spheres sort of create like, like how America is. They just take an idea it's like and keep turning it up kind of like a mob mentality like yeah. maybe someone that wouldn't be this extreme but they're surrounded by all these people that are so extreme they think exactly like, oh this is okay this is the new normal mm. yeah and then they do what you were just saying and turn it up as yeah. they go there was a time that the alt-right was just a bunch of edgy meme lords hmm. and they were just like we like being able to say whatever we want okay. because we're tired of being told like oh you can't say that i'm offended and they're just mm -hmm. like shut up first amendment yeah 
And see, I understand. Like yeah. you can understand like, that sentiment. Yeah. Like I agree with that. Say whatever you want. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyone should be allowed to say whatever they want, no matter how terrible it is. Sure. But like, and so the whole like racism thing or the Jew thing, uh, like the Nazis and all of that mess started out as just like, how can we trigger the snowflakes? Because mm. what's what's the sacred things and the things that you yeah. can't say? And so it's like, all right, let's say the N word. Let's, mm. you know, call everyone a cuck and Hitler you know, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it. It was a joke at first just to be like, ha ha, Hitler's the worst thing you can be, so let's be Hitler. Yeah. Because it's funny. And then people who are actually Nazi sympathizers and actual Nazis they were like, like, got on with that. Hey. Yeah. This is an in. We got a platform. Yeah. And so it became this self-fulfilling prophecy sort of thing. And so even if someone who wasn't originally a, like, Nazi sympathizer might be in those groups all the time. And that just gets into you all the time. Yeah. And you, st- and then eventually you're like, it stops shocking you yeah, whenever you see maybe things. Maybe I don't like black people. <laughs> and it's like, it just happens over time and it gets insane. Man. <laughs> but like, it's anonymous. And so there's no repercussions. Yeah. I say, terrible things on the internet and not have to face the consequences. Yeah. The anonymity thing, like (laughs) how you were talking about bringing it back to music. The only thing I can think of that would be like that is like, okay, we're at this gig. You're not going to be on stage and no one's going to know it's you playing this solo. Like, okay, I'm going to do all the weird, crazy things I would never attempt. Right. And that's, it's a great way of getting good Yeah, because it's like, all right, since if, if it was a bigger crowd, I would be afraid to do this. Yeah, like if people saw me on stage, like I'm not going to try this yeah. whatever stupid lick that I know isn't going to work, but just want to try it for the yeah. fun of it. But then the more that you do it, the more comfortable you're on stage doing it. And mm-hmm. so it's like, cool, I'll bite a bat's head off on stage. <laughs> <laughs> um, because then it just becomes the thing. Mm-hmm. But then also, like that's a, a cultural way of doing it too, but there's also like a musical way that – like in the in the early 20th century uh people were hey we're tired of tonality <laughs> and these normal scales so yeah. how much farther can we go and then they had like pitch class sets and they just picked mm-hmm. you know a set of any of the 12 notes and yeah. made entire pieces out of just these five notes or these three notes or whatever it might be yeah. and then it was just how can we get entirely away from tonality and just mm-hmm. go into full systematic non-tonal work? tone rows yeah. and all that stuff. Um, and so it, mm-hmm. it got so within itself that it's like, let's get as far away from tonality as possible. Therefore, systematic randomness yeah you're like your own in like a your own submarine in the ocean that is <laughs> diatonicism or something yeah and so it doesn't sound good it's it's really yeah. neat to analyze yeah um but i'm not you know i'm not gonna get in my car and turn on some milton babbitt yeah. who was a, a mathematician also composer who was just like i like numbers this is this is a great way of yeah making numbers sound interesting and it's it's cool it's really cool to analyze his work but also it's cool because cool. someone did it yeah like the fact that you did it <laughs> is cool yeah the fact that adam neely did giant steps as a fractal yes is awesome but also why yeah <laughs> it's, and so musical circles tend to do that mm-hmm. and it's like hey we found a thing how do we turn this up yeah <laughs> back to the whole american thing you were saying yeah take it and just push the fader all the way up <laughs> and that's like what happened with metal that's what happens with mm-hmm. rap that's what happens with anything you take an aspect of a genre and just keep cranking it yeah and so yeah maybe at first it was just like i got some distortion on my guitar it's like uh, I, turn, I don't like your rules. I turn my clean amp up too loud and get this little bit of grit. Yeah. 
and then it's it, put it in a box. And then eventually someone else is like, hey, that guy said, I don't like your rules. Let's turn that up a little bit more. Before and, you know it, you have 50 metal zones plugged into each other. <laughs> yeah. And that's a thing. There's there's a whole subgenre, which is actually pretty cool if you really, if you can get into it. But like harsh noise. Um, you ever like, listen to harsh noise? Like just, I've listened to like noise music. But like I don't know what harsh noise is. <laughs> it's it's a lot of like feedback and like cranking distortion and it's it's okay. just it sounds so grating that it's emotionally effective. Okay. <laughs> Kinda, in like a similar way to like drone music, like Sun O or things like that. N- more in a similar way to like blast beats okay like blast beats and like you know do not do metal uh too too many subgenres, but like yeah. black metal yeah like a lot of notes and just like yeah as fast as you can get and it's you know screaming and everything it's how close to just straight up white noise can we get yeah while still physically doing something on our instruments okay that but like harsh noise is taking electronic devices and finding different uh, ways of creating noise. See, that sounds kind of interesting. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah. But it wouldn't have happened if, you know, a subgroup of a subgroup of a subgroup hadn't yeah. been like, what if I just let the feedback happen? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what, if, what if I just let my analog delay go until it blows up my amp? Like, let's yeah. record that. It's if I put the microphone in front of the speaker... <laughs> a large terrible noise happens but that's kind of cool record it (laughs) yeah like things like that i like the creativity part of it even if it doesn't sound good it's you did it yeah like the whole found sounds thing Mm -hmm. like i think that's pretty cool Mm -hmm. i'm I'm not a huge fan of it but i always enjoy like Mm -hmm. especially if they put together like a little video compilation yeah of them like (laughs) getting all the sounds with Mm -hmm. their microphone yeah there's uh you know about music concrete I don't. Um, So it was like a a weird French movement of like people taking recordings of nature or, uh, you know, so it's like, here's a babbling brook and it's just like, or here's, you know, the trees, but it's art because I decided to record it Hmm. and put it here. It's because I did it. Musical. Because there's music in the like, world. Like 433? Kind of, yeah. Like well, that. the, that's the thing is like, that the music is the sound that comes out of the silence. Yeah. And so, so... Whatever you choose to hear as music. Yeah. And so music concrete is just like, what is simple stuff that we can record? And if mm-hmm. you listen to it as music, it's effective as music. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but if if you have to explain to someone, <laughs> like, trust me, this is music. This is what the genre is. Before I show this to you, mm. let me just explain how this works. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you're a little deep. Yeah. <laughs> you're like you're not going to open your next set with it. Yeah. And so, looking at an image of Markiplier's face. Photoshopped onto Lord Farquaad's head, photoshopped onto Mark Zuckerberg's body at the Facebook hearings is funny. Yes. <laughs> not because... Just trust me, it is. Not because there's a joke in there. That is the joke. hmm <laughs> And so, here, Yoko Ono recorded the sound of a toilet flushing. It's music. Get it? <laughs> Yes. Whatever you, <laughs> whatever you define as music is music. Yeah. And that is actually um that is kind of my definition of music that it's intentionally organized sound, so just sound with intent. Yeah. yeah. And so if a if a tree falls in the forest, it's not music, but if you record it and put it on an album and tell people that it's music, it's music. Yeah, the intent <laughs> is, changes everything. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you put that, because normally 
just back to a definition of music, I always think I always organize organized groups of rhythms and pitch, like mm. pitch and rhythm. Yeah. But I guess if you space it out far <laughs> if, enough. If you're Adam Neely, yeah. those are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let's let's not even get into our <laughs> harmonic polyrhythms thing. Have you seen his like talk about that? Yeah, it's it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> in a way. But but yeah, I like that. I've never gotten into the whole like life is music thing because let's be real, I'm it's a guitar a, player. It's like, a bit heady. Yeah, like I want to play my pentatonic scale. Yeah. Like, and so but the thing is too, and this is getting even deeper, is that like music as we know it is culturally defined. So we have we have the notes that we have kind of arbitrarily. Yeah. In the Western music system. Yeah. I mean Chinese scales use more pentatonic. Indian scales have more microtones. Yeah, they, yeah. Well, what we call microtones because yeah. they're just between our tones. For them, they're just our tones. Yeah, we're our imperialist Western values. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point. I've never thought of it that way. It's um, like in China, they just call Chinese food food, like that yeah. whole that old joke. Yeah, yeah. I've never thought about it that way. <laughs> and so, yeah, Indian music. These are the tones. Yeah. And so you've got one note for 15 minutes, play over it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but, and then there's a whole, like, you know, what the conical system, the rhythmic system. Oh yeah. Like yeah, the it's Takita, language with the, yeah. Tata Ginantom, like all of those. It's beautiful and wonderful and it blows my mind. And I have no idea what it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, do you follow Ben Levin on YouTube? Uh, yeah, I don't watch enough of his stuff, but yeah, it's he's got a video on that that's really informative, and he breaks down like how to use it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't really, mm -hmm. but it's interesting. Yeah, especially whenever you see the guys that are doing it crazy fast, and they're like walking you through like on screen, like this yeah, is what yeah. he's doing. It's just like exactly mind blowing. It's beautiful too. Yeah, um, the fact that we can train ourselves to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Um. I there was once a uh, a project in a film scoring class where uh, we were doing like a mock like video game soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, and one of the areas in that video game was sort of deserty outdoors, and okay. I was like, "Ooh, I have some like tabla samples. Uh, let me see like what I can do with that." Yeah. And so I was like, "Wait, but I want to do it right." And so I looked into Tabla and I was like, I'm not going to do this right. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what I do, I will be very badly appropriating this. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's some things like, like, like anything on congas, mm. like it's just, I don't understand it and I <laughs> will never put in the time to actually understand it. Yeah. I think at one point I would like to understand Tablas, yeah. but it's like a whole, it's a language. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like. Everything that I've studied to learn how to do on guitar, conga players do the exact same thing or tabla players yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's they know their instrument, like the good ones, like the good players for that know their instrument better than Yeah. Or as well as like the best guitarists know their instruments. Exactly. Like they know everything, mm -hmm. which I'm not <laughs> articulating that very well. Or, right. But, but it's like we devote our lives to a thing yeah. that's kind of arbitrary to yeah i can play this combination of things with my fingers on this instrument that is yeah like we're just making noise we're not saving lives or anything yeah. <laughs> but yeah i think it the reason i can't go further into what i mean with what i'm talking about with like all the different hand drums and things yeah, like yeah. that it's just i don't know enough about them to even get see what i don't understand about them yeah like, um sephra had shared something that was like the the process of knowledge and it was like uh unconscious mm. ignorance yeah. then like conscious ignorance then uh conscious, conscious. knowledge then in unconscious knowledge yeah um so like whenever you have a scale under your hands and you can just do it mm -hmm. without thinking about it great you've reached the 
last step of yeah. understanding that you unconsciously know that scale. But then I was like, sometimes that becomes a cycle. Yeah. <laughs> because once you break through a certain realm in that, it's like, yeah, I've broken through and I can play this major scale without thinking about it. And it's like, all right, now all the modes. Mm-hmm. Modes? <laughs> what are those? It's like, you're back to unconscious <laughs> ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> or even that same like C major scale. Great. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Let's put on guitar because I'm that's the only one I know. Right, right. Like let's say you do your eighth fret low E C major scale. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Now do it where your hand is going towards the head of headstock of the guitar, but ascending. Yeah. Like there's so <laughs> many different ways to do everything. Yeah. And then you start it on you, know, you mm-hmm. do all the modes, but like, all right, yeah. now start it on the second note of the scale and yeah. do it all the way up. Now do it on the A string. Yeah. Like- <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, there's whole realms of knowledge. And once you reach a certain point, then you realize, oh, there's always there's more. a whole lot that I already don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's cool. Yeah. Um, it's daunting. I like it because awesome. you'll never be done. Mm-hmm. Like. Like, I, I don't know. No one is ever going to master any instrument. Like there are people that get close, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think any one person ever is going to be like, oh, yeah, I got it. Figured it out. There are people who have pretty much, like, but. Well, I guess I'm not really. I'm still speaking more from guitar perspective. Right, right. Because some instruments, <laughs> like, I assume, can be simpler. Like, yeah. I mean, but even I, still, like you can do all that same stuff. Like you can play through all of, all of your modes on a recorder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the cool thing too. And that kind of gets a bit deeper too, is that you can get really good at music and not necessarily be good at yeah instruments. Yeah. Um, that's a weird thing that I have, honestly. Like mm-hmm. my primary instrument is voice. I guess like, yeah, that's the instrument that I'm best at. Yeah. I also play guitar. Um, I'm not good enough to consider myself a guitarist. I also play bass. I'm not good enough to consider myself a bassist. I also play keyboard. I'm not good enough (laughs) to consider myself a keys player, but I know enough music that you get how they work. Yeah. And so I don't have to be, a bassist to figure out how to play a bass line. I know music well enough to figure yeah. out how to play a bass line. And so I can pick up a bass and learn most things. Yeah. There's stuff that will take me a lot longer that a real bassist would be a lot better at. Yeah. Um, it's like what something that's musically difficult that's physic against something that's physically difficult. Exactly. And so I can learn, you know, a rush song or something that are really musically complex songs. Yeah. Um, especially on bass, Mm -hmm. but learning to play something in the style of corn's bass player (laughs) is like a entirely different physical feat that I can't do. (laughs) Not in a timely manner. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You got me thinking about corn. Yeah. I like corn. Corn's great. Fieldy is extra clicky, but oh, I, yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. Just sits right right in the front of the mix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vocals, guitars, doesn't matter. There's bass there. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, corn corn is a band, they're just tight. I've seen them twice now. Mm-hmm. And they are just they're a great live band. Yeah. Uh a friend of mine's girlfriend at the time got peed on at a corn concert. At the zoo amphitheater. Uh, by one of the band members? No. Or, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, no, it was just some like, guy. Some guy in the crowd? Yeah. Man. Yeah. That sounds like a rough show. Yeah. It wasn't that, like, it, it wasn't bad. It was just like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> but outdoor show, I guess. Dude had to pee. Whatever. It was Corn and Slipknot. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Last time I saw him, it was Corn and Rob Zombie. Nice. And <laughs> Rob Zombie was great to watch too because I'm not a huge fan of his. Like, I just didn't know enough. Mm. The dude 
dances nonstop. That's he pretty did, great. Yeah. <laughs> he did not stop dancing the entire show. Like James Brown type stuff, like kicks and yeah, dropping yeah. the mic stand. and that's, that's some old rock stuff. Mm, then he cut the set midway through and played the trailer for his new movie. <laughs> He's Rob Zombie. Oh, of course. <laughs> and he had John 5 come out, played a 15-minute long guitar solo where he switched guitars like every 30 seconds. Like he played, what? yeah. <laughs> play telly his tech brings out a les paul destroys it brings out this mini guitar that's like a foot and a half plays some crazy solo on that while rob zombie walks through the crowds and high fives people that's pretty great that was a good show <laughs> i mean like i didn't know any of the music but i had a great time oh no, yeah, yeah yeah and the that's the other thing that i was going to mention is that like it doesn't you don't necessarily have to know and analyze any single piece of music to be able to enjoy music. Yeah. Um, but it kind of goes back to the cu- cultural thing. Like, a major scale is happy to us because we've been listening to a major scale be happy mm. all our lives. Yeah. <laughs> if you spend all your life listening to a minor scale and that's happy all your life and all the music that you listen to yeah. is playing is saying happy lyrics on top of a minor scale or what we refer to as a minor scale an aeolian scale Uh, (laughs) then you will associate it with happiness and that's just the thing i was talking about this not too long ago like i made a joke to one of my students like because they were just being a pain as kids are Mm. i'm like like pay attention otherwise i'm just gonna start teaching you things wrong just (laughs) teach you things incorrectly (laughs) <laughs> like oh yeah you got a d an f sharp and an a that's a g minor chord right there oh, geez. like <laughs> like i'll just start teaching you things that are incorrect <laughs> and then i was talking to my sister and she was like oh i never thought about that yeah i could tell my son that like this cup is orange and it's blue <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's like yeah like, that's that's a worse punishment than just like hitting them <laughs> <laughs> oh man because you have yeah. to deal with the ramifications of that the rest of your life. Yeah, that's very long term. That's that's the long game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't right. listen. Whatever mm. you didn't clean your room. Whenever I told you to. Sorry, Sorry. red is blue now. Oh, <laughs> <Like, laughs> uh, that's hilarious. That is kind of a weird thing. Like, so <laughs> I'm like self conscious about tying my shoes because I'm left handed and both my parents are right handed and neither of them like were able to teach me and so mm. I had to like teach myself and it was weird and so I'm like self conscious about tying my shoes. Oh, <laughs> but I'm also Just... self conscious about playing guitar because I taught myself. So how do you tie your shoes? Do you do bunny loops? Um, wrap around the weird thing where people do this and it's like done. Uh, so I eventually learned the like. It's a a loop and then you tie the thing around it and then you pull it through. Yeah. Which I guess the, the normal way, but it, it took me a while to get that. What I would do is, you know, the basic knot where you cross them and tie them under. Yes. I would do two like bunny ears and then cross them and tie them. <laughs> and so I yeah. just, I just knotted them twice. I don't, I don't think that's weird. I think, because I kind of remember like being a kid and learning how to tie shoes. Like I remember having friends doing that, like where they would take the two loops. and like, Right. No one taught me that. I was just like, I know this knot, so I'll just do that to where it looks like the other knot that people like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whatever happened to Velcro and zippers? Like what's wrong with that? Well, that, that's <laughs> the thing too. I always, I always hated wearing shoes that had laces because I was like, oh, I have to tie my shoes then. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. It like it's bled into my adult life, and I I feel weird about shoes with laces. And that and that was way back then. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine having to go through all the colors in your head, just like wait, which one is that one again? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh crap, is that red or blue? Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> yeah. No that uh, that'll mess up. <laughs> that'll mess you up. Don't do that to anyone, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Because yeah. if like, the thing is too though like. Red and blue, that's kind of more arbitrary. It's just like socially we've accepted yeah. that. But like if you tell someone that D, F sharp and A is a G minor, they'll mm. once they learn enough music, yeah. they'll be able to work backwards and go, 
No, that's a D major chord. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking, though, like, what if you just give someone a guitar, all the strings out of order, tuned to whatever, but it's always the same tuning. Make music. What's going to come out of it? Yeah. Like, and I'm sure there's lots of cases of people having done that where, you know, maybe the last person who had that guitar at the pawn shop had it tuned to dadgad. Yeah. So you learned guitar on dadgad. Mm-hmm. Cashmere, here we are. <laughs> or like Albert King or Eric Gales, like playing upside down, mm-hmm. like the with the high E string up at the top. Yeah. Mm. Um. Well, that's another thing. I'm left handed, and I taught myself how to play right handed. Oh, okay. Um. Because the only guitar I had was a right handed guitar. Like, yeah. Because my brother's girlfriend at the time was like, Hey, you want to learn guitar, right? Here's this guitar that I've never played. And so oh, that's awesome. I still have that guitar. That's still my acoustic guitar, but <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but I taught myself on that guitar because, well, I have to learn. Yeah. And I don't have a left-handed one. So here we are. I yeah. just taught myself right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> like, which I don't know. That's funny. I always thought, that that's how it should be. Like if you're left-handed, you should play like this. Like yeah, you're doing a lot of work with your left hand. The thing is though, is that you need the dexterity on your right hand because my right hand sucks. Uh, like I can't really do like finger picking or uh, like even just like, you know, arpeggios very well because my right hand has less dexterity than my left. I can True. keep working on it. And yeah. I, I've been getting better I'm, just I'm just, over the years, but like. Like that would be hard to pick with my left hand. I, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to imagine playing yeah. upside down. Right. It's because the dexterity that your hand has, it's, it's the same as like writing with your wrong hand. Yeah. Whenever you pick up a pencil in your wrong hand, you're like, oh gosh, I can't do anything that makes any sense yeah. because your hand just isn't used to it yet. Um, uh, I say yet because anyone can become ambidextrous. Yeah, that's what I normally tell like the parents of students that are left-handed. Like, well, should they learn left-handed or right-handed? Like, it'll be honestly, cheaper to learn right-handed. right-handed. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have a lot more options. <laughs> but also, right now, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna yeah. be awkward and it's gonna suck either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Joe Perry is mm-hmm. left-handed, plays yeah. right-handed. Mark Knopfler, like that. Wow, really? That's awesome. Yeah, he said like <laughs> that's how he does like those three-string bends with his left hand. Hmm. um but i mean it's still like a weird thing like i don't i can't do figure picking very well because i haven't worked on it long enough but it's it's weird it's not like a natural thing like yeah yeah uh to me the most unnatural thing in the world for the longest time was piano like i just could not mm -hmm. like for explaining things or learning things Mm -hmm. the best but just actually getting both (laughs) hands working it's just like what and that, um, I had to take piano for, um, the two years that I did music ed, but also a little bit in grad school. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not a pianist, but I've taken enough piano to know how I learn piano. Yeah. It's, it's a weird sort of half step, but it's like, I don't know how to play piano necessarily. I know how to teach myself piano if I have to play something. Yes, that's kind of <laughs> where I'm at. Like, I know, like what you were talking about earlier, I know music. Yeah, like, exactly. I know that if I'm going to spell an A sus chord, it's A, D, and E. How mm. can I play it with this hand? How is it going to go with this hand? And I can yeah. kind of, I can piece things together really slowly, but yeah, I can't just sit down and just like, oh yeah, just let me just jam on this piano. Yeah, and that's the weird thing is that as a composer, I don't, have to be good at a particular instrument yeah i just have to understand music well enough to put music for for other instruments yeah um and it's actually been a a strange thing too is because whenever i first started grad school i was like i don't like i had to keep filling out forms that were like primary instrument and i was Mm. like right now i've been playing guitar more than i've been singing I guess guitar, but I'm not a guitarist. Yeah. And then eventually I, you know, was honest with myself enough to be like, now nah, you've been singing forever. You're a singer. <laughs> primary instrument, my mind. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, 
composing. Yeah. I, my primary instrument is putting notes into a piano mm-hmm. roll and pressing play on, on Ableton Live. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And so I know music well enough. Yeah. To, to do the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's like my whole thing, like whether it's taking a gig or doing anything music wise, mm-hmm. like I'm going to say yes, even if I can't do it. Right. Because it doesn't matter if I can do it now. It's I'll be able to do it when that day gets there. Yeah. What's the set like, list? Cool. Got it. <laughs> What's the set list? Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey, we're going to play uh, this tool song, but backwards. You're like, oh, yeah, no problem. You get in the car like, why did I say that? Wait, what? No. <laughs> like, you're never going to work in this town again. <laughs> But we're actually, uh, we really need an accordion player. So, uh, you know, you said you were multi-instrumentalist, right? I, well, like, I play. Can I tune it like a guitar? <laughs> <laughs> accordion would be a lot of fun to learn, but it's like, it's weird. Mm. You know about accordion? Accordion. I, with, I, with, it's a reed instrument oh. for one. That's how. The, I don't understand like get, all the little black pegs on one side. Uh, those are chords. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like I said, I don't know anything about accordion. Yeah. Uh, so one side has the melody and the mm. other side is just like chords that you could choose mm. from. Yeah, it's yeah. really strange. It seems hard. Yeah, it, it is. Like, like exceedingly difficult. Yeah. <laughs> like you're playing piano with one hand, all of these buttons on this yeah, side. It's just buttons. They're not while, labeled. While just squeezing. Yeah. At least guitar like gives you the dots. Yeah. To be like, oh, double dots. Awkward. Oh. Man, I had to sound check a bass player's bass one time. And I go, I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, I can do that. I walk over, and I'm just going to play through some licks. And I'm like, oh, okay, this will be fun. I looked at no dots on the top. Weird. And I was like, oh, man, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I don't know how classical guitarists do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's also like you you know what it feels like. Yeah, like I can guess. And nine times out of ten, I'll be pretty close if not on it. Yeah. But Second, I look down and start questioning everything. Exactly. <laughs> and that's, again, that's why it's really good to teach people on piano because mm. it's a visual music theory machine. Yeah, everything's linear. Like it's just, Yeah. Like, what's a fifth? Look at it. Yeah. This is what a fifth looks like, feels like. And it lets you know that, like, C to G, B to F sharp, like, it's mm. always going to be that shape. Yeah. It's a visual music theory machine. Yeah. Middle C is right here. This is the only place where this note exists. <laughs> that, you have five of those on your guitar. Yeah. Like, for whatever reason, guitar isn't notated with a grand staff, and that's n- really annoying because well, a low E is the... Well, it's transposed to the octave. No, I know, but it still needs two staves. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Man. Because not transposed... The low E is the E below bass clef. Okay. <laughs> See, whenever I think of it, it's always like the E below the three ledger lines because it's transposed. Right. It's yeah. just super annoying because... <laughs> well, the problem is, though, without like the 8VA thing, you just have a million ledger lines up, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, and so... like, I totally get why guitarists guitar have needs. the stereotype of like, oh, yeah, guitarists can't read music. Yeah, you're it's, reading like 12 ledger lines all it, the time. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, oh, play C, E, and G. Here, 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 here. Yeah. Like, which a position? Gigantic range. And yeah, and it's all the same. Like, we assume it's treble clef. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I and do. bass guitar is notated an octave up because the actual notes are below the bass staff. Okay. Um, See, I am terrible with bass clef. <laughs> I'm at the point where I still have to like, wait, what note is that? Oh, it's D. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I played trombone, so. Yeah, I never did any bass clef instruments in band. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, bass and tuba uh, are notated an octave up so mm. that you don't have to do a whole bunch of ledger lines. Down. Down. Is it tuba? No, it might just be double bass. Uh, which is the same instrument. Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't know that. Man. <laughs> but it's, you know, really annoying. Yeah. It's really annoying to write for <laughs> because you have to transpose all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah. One other big philosophical point 
I was wanting to make is that I think the stuff that we sort of characterize as like emotionally blank or something doesn't necessarily be explain itself that way because of the music theory as a lot of times that we try and think about it that way. It's like, Oh, Mm -hmm. this feels really emotionally wrought because you're playing like the five, seven chord a whole lot before resolving down to a one chord. Yeah. And it's like, fair enough. But like a singer singing really high sounds like weeping. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. And that's a bit more universal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Going back to what you were saying, like, we only assume major is happy is because, like, all of our nursery rhymes and everything, happy is all major. It's all Ionian. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I, I'm wondering, though, just, like, erase music theory. It doesn't exist. There mm-hmm. is no music. Start over. Um, like, going. You just have the overtone series. Well, no, like not not that far. <laughs> right, right. Not that far. I'm saying like people are starting with music again. Mm-hmm. Like, well, no, and say- that's what I mean is like you would just have the overtone series. If you have any pitch yeah. anywhere, you have the fundamental, yeah, the octave, the fifth, the fourth, and so on, the overtone series, because that's always true. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying like, will someone always figure out that a plagal cadence sounds this way, feels this way? No, like that's it's just over. Uh, it's really warm. Like, will people, like, will people hear the Phrygian mode? And we're like, oh, no, that sounds not Spanish. Or that's that just sounds evil. Hundreds of years of setting this foundation, and then setting the next foundation on top of that, and setting the next foundation on top of that. I don't know. Though, <laughs> I'm just wondering if history would repeat itself. Like, because people are the one that are the ones that decided that Lydian is dreamy. Like, right, are yeah. they going to rediscover that or who, like who told them? Right. Well, that's the thing is that over time, enough people just keep saying it. It just becomes true. Yeah. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. You tell yourself that black people are <laughs> inferior, then you can just <laughs> Red believe is blue. it eventually. Red is blue. Yeah. And you just keep going like, oh, Plague with Cadence sounds this way because there's it's the, nice. The it's warm. Tonic pedal that maintains through the bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can explain it too. Like you yeah. can go, Oh, this is why, but it's like, it's 12 notes. Why is it 12 notes? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, again, Indian scales have mm-hmm. more tones than ours do. So is there a plagal cadence in an Indian scale? <laughs> I actually don't know. <laughs> I- well, some of these things just arise out of our system itself. Yeah. Like, we have 12 notes, but we only pick seven of them. Why seven? Uh, nah. <laughs> Someone decided these sound good. God. Um, yeah. God, number seven. Sure. Let's go that. Church likes music. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the thing about the number seven is that it's uneven, and so you can split it in two ways i guess three ways if you want to split it that way but let's just go with if you cut it in half you either have one two three one two three four which is what we're used to or one two three four one two three and so those patterns will arise no matter what and so if you like our separation of half steps and whole steps is what generates these tensions. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, and so like me to fa sounds cool because it's a half step and you three keep, to four. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, it's a half step in a major scale. And, yeah. and so whenever that resolves, like there's a lot of tension going from four to three because it's a half step. Yeah. There's a lot of tension going from seven to eight because it's a half step. Yeah, the leading tone type thing. Yeah. Like we're just kind of... Because it's closer. Well, but that's just generated from the fact that we pick these notes. Yeah. <laughs> and so whenever you have a, a whole tone scale, for example, that all of the notes are equally away from each other. Yeah. Then 
tension and release is only created through essentially repetition. You can only have a foundational note if it's played more often than another one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. Um, I wrote a piano piece in a whole tone scale. It was a lot of fun to do, to like mess with that. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> How um, the the tensions or releases or whatever, I guess, emotions that we get from music. Oh, yeah. Just self-arise from the system itself. You're saying, is that, I guess that could be anything. Anything is only anything because we say it is. Yeah. Cool. But, but the systems or the way that a thing is does eventually funnel some ways. So, uh, what do you mean by funnel some ways? Like someone, like people are going to start calling it this and have their own subgroups. Well, like Like the way that evolution works is that like literally natural selection is like the way, the reason why this bird's beak is shaped this way is because the one whose beak was slightly more shaped this way that was able to break open the nut and survive is the one that survived. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it survived, it keeps going. Yes. And so it wasn't necessarily that it was, I have to survive. Therefore I need to curve my beak. It's beak just so happened to be curved that way. So it survived. <laughs> Relate that back to music. <laughs> you, lost, you lost me there. There happens to be a half step between seven and eight. Yeah. So there's tension there. <laughs> I'm with you. I just don't understand what the point is. Like, what are, what's the like? What's the resolution you're trying to make? Um, trends appear from the inherent nature of systems. Okay. <laughs> that, that makes more sense. I was still thinking like music. I was like. <laughs> I'm like trying to like, how is this going back to music? Like, <laughs> like I am lost. This, this is what, yeah. Like I thought we were talking about a major scale. Like, Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, no trends appear due to the nature of how a system is inherently. <laughs> okay. Um, so I mean, again, seven to eight sounds cool because it's a half step. Yes. We're really used to it, and it sounds more refreshing than going from two to one yeah. because that distance is larger and there's less tension. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's why like six to five in a minor scale is so powerful. Yeah, yeah. Five is a strong note in a minor scale, and so having the half step next to it is really powerful because the five is both in the five chord and in the one chord. And so you can use that half step there a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Sounds cool. (laughs) I agree. (laughs) We've gotten so far into the rabbit hole. I know. There's no way out. I'm like, I'm so just going to do the outro. All right. (laughs) Thank you for doing this with me. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Where can we find you in your things? I've just, Facebook, Adam Marquez, M A R Q U E Z. Yeah. That's pretty much it for now. <laughs> Don't worry. There will be an Instagram at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. Adam plays guitar. He's pretty good at it. You can you can check that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh he's more than pretty good at it. Cause that's his job. <laughs> uh no, but really, uh I wish we could collaborate more musically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could in the future. I still have all the charts for your songs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe we will. Anyways, I'm Santiago Ramones. I'm Adam Marquez. You can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. You can download my demo, Songs with Words, or pay money for it if you want. And you can also find this podcast. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say pay money for it. Yeah. Do that. That, that, do that would be one. nice, too. Do that one. Um, quick side note. It's kind of weird having like a digital tip jar. Like if someone just wanted to give me like a thousand dollars without my consent, they can just do that. <laughs> You're just putting that out there for everyone. It's like, yeah. Well, well I mean, yeah. Cause if, if like, 
if your dad or something goes, I need to give you these thousand dollars. You can be like, no, dad, please. Like, yeah. Like, like I'm not taking you, that. You need it. Like, I can't, I'm not taking that. Like I can be the given a large there. amount yeah. of money without my consent. <laughs> and you can't send it back. Can yeah. You? Like, I don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> But also, but also, if you want to give me a large amount of money without my consent, that's what I was about to say. I think you, you should. also have my consent. <laughs> music is your music specifically is something I would overpay for. Thank you. That, that really means a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> They're good songs. Um, yeah. And <laughs> you can listen to this podcast uh, on all of the usual places, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher and Google Play. Uh, you can leave comments and reviews on stuff and if february 20th is still not a date that has happened before this podcast is released then you should go to the jazz lab at 7 30 there will be a free concert with electronic music and pizza <laughs> my favorite type of music yeah free pizza kind yep I'll there look. there is also a piece not by me uh by our instructor that involves all five senses oh yeah. That sounds interesting. I'd go just for that part. Yeah. If there is music that is happening while you are eating pizza, you are feeling the pizza, you are tasting the pizza, you are smelling the pizza, you are hearing <laughs> music, and you are seeing. Did I always say seeing? But yeah. All and you're watching music happen. And there's a song about that. That's yes. cool. Yeah. A omnisensory piece of music. It's fun. That sounds really cool. <laughs> Go to it. Electric pizza. Uh, I always end my podcast with my three things. They shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong. <laughs>